Shalom friends, we are in Parsha Noah, and we all know the story. God tells Noah to build an ark for the flood. I want to focus on verse 16. It says, you shall make a window for the ark. Now, what's really interesting is the word for window here in Hebrew is Zohar, which is the only occurrence in the whole Torah. In the 600 and something odd letters, only occurrence in the Torah. So I ask, is this just your ordinary window? Rashi, the great Jewish commentator, says, Some say it was a window, and some say it was a precious stone, which provided light for him. The Pashat, the simple meaning, if it was just a window, we can understand the statement, You shall make. Ta-ashe, a Zohar, a window. But the Remez, the hint, if it was a precious stone, you shall make is better translated as you shall prepare. Because man does not make precious stones, my friends. So what supports this Remez, the hint for a precious stone? If we go to Genesis chapter 8, verse 6, referring to the same window, because Hashem said, build a window, not multiple windows. We look at that word for window. This is the one that Noah opened, the same window, and it's actually spelt differently, of course. It's spelt halon, which is a more traditional word for window. So we ask ourselves this question, what is the Torah showing us here? Since Zohar is the only time mentioned in the Torah there, back in verse uh, chapter 8, or verse uh, chapter 6, sorry. Zohar literally means light. So on the simple level, God is saying, make a Zohar. Make a window that will bring in light. Furthermore, God wanted the ark to have three floors and many compartments, but only one window. So as big as the ark was, this one window wouldn't really do much providing light for the whole ark, right? And also for the flood, the whole world. Was it even light outside? Maybe for the first part, but definitely for the 40 days it was darkness. Darkness surrounded the ark. So yes, these questions we have to ask. So of course this probably was a literal window, but the greater question is what is the Torah showing us here, right? And so even some of the sages in the Talmud could not understand the meaning of the Zohar in the context of this verse. So, I have the Midrash Rabbah right here. Chapter 31 verse 11 says, A light, a Zohar shalt thou make in the ark. Rabbi Hanan and Hoshea could not explain the meaning of Zohar. Rabbi Kahana and Levi did explain it. Kahana said, It means a sky light. Rabbi Levi said, A precious stone. During the whole 12 months that Noah was in the ark, he did not require the light of the sun by day or the light of the moon by night, but he had a polished gem which he hung up. When it was dim, he knew that it was day, and when it shone, he knew that it was night. Incredible. So God said, prepare a Zohar, a precious stone that gives light. Noah could have used this extra light during 40 days for sure. With the darkness that surrounded the ark, he could have even brought it from room to room, carrying the light with him. My friends, the precious stone, so I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. The precious stone, a polished gem. First Peter, I'm just going to start dropping verses here. First Peter 2 verse 4 onwards. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by people, but chosen by God as, and precious to Him. You yourselves as living stones are being built into spiritual house to be a kohanim set apart for God to offer spiritual sacrifices accepted to Him through Yeshua the Messiah. This is why the Tanakh says, Look, I am laying in Zion a stone, a chosen and precious cornerstone. And whoever rests his trust on it will certainly not be humiliated. One more, a couple more actually. Exodus 28 verse 20 speaks of 
the dress wear for the Kohanim and the breastplate. And it has the 12 gems or jewels on the, uh, on the breastplate, which are for the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, it says, in fourth row, a barrel, an onyx, and a jasper. They are to be mounted on their gold setting. So the last one is the jasper. Now, jasper, from an unused root, meaning to polish, checking out my notes here, a gem supposed to be a jasper from the resemblance in the name, a jasper. Yasheve, it's spelled. And if you look at the spelling in Hebrew, it's very similar to Yeshua. Yeshua, it even almost sounds the same. A jasper stone is the last one on the breastplate. Revelations 4.3, the one sitting there gleamed like diamonds and rubies, and a rainbow shined emerald encircled the throne. Revelation 21.19, the foundation stones of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of precious stone. Harishon, the first foundation stone was jasper. So we have the first jasper here, Exodus 20, verse 28, verse 20, the jasper is the last stone. Yeshua said, I am the first and the last. My friends, do not let, let this stone be a stumbling block for you. Look into the window and you will see the light who is Yeshua, the light of the world, and he will separate you from the darkness. Baruch Hashem. Thank you for watching.